We make a very simple block today, which I refer to as a contact bar, or often we also refer to it as a call to action, not technically. And we'll talk about call to actions in the future to come because it's one of those essential concepts and elements in website design. But mostly whenever you see a button on a site, we call it a call to action or a CTA. We are going to design on our abstract photography page this contact bar here with simple text over here and then a button over here. Let's delete this block so I can start it from the beginning and we build it up. Add a new block, grab the blank block, and the first thing I'll do is I'll give this block the black background color. Go to the block settings, over here colors, and I'll choose the black here in the corner by dragging my little selector until I see triple zero, triple zero, and then I'm done with the background. Next, I'll bring in a text element over here. To the left, add elements, text, and a button for the right. Look over here, the button, click and drag and drop. Highlight the text, and then you type in for all your, or for your, your interior photography, photography needs. And we begin styling this. We click on topography, and I'm going to choose a very famous font, Lato, Lato, Lato. And let's increase the size. And under the weight, we choose bold. We can even make it black. Yeah, let's go for black. Lato and at black. And I think good enough. Color, we choose white. And there's a little swatch over here that is white. And then we are done with our text. Let's go style the button. Click on the button. And the first thing I will do is align it to the right. As you click on the alignment, you can cycle through the various positions. We keep it to the right. Let's look at what the button options allow us to do. These options are here under this little click hand icon, and it will open up button settings as well as the icon settings over here. For the button, you can choose between a small size, a medium, or a large, or you can click on the three dots and it will give you the option to set the width and the height, which actually is nothing else but padding. So remember, if you want to have custom control over your button size, do it over here. I'm going to select S for small. You have the option over here to give your button a fill, which is the blue color, or you can remove the fill and only keep a border or nothing like that at all. I'm going to leave it on fill. The corner allows you to shape it a little bit rounder. So if I click on that, it will give you that round corners. Or again, you can set it by yourself over here by dragging like this. I'm going to choose the sharp corners. And here is the border. Let's go change our topography next. Also Lato, 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 Lato. And let's make it a tad bigger, only the size of the text. And what happens if we reduce the line height? will give us a little bit more space inside. So I'm going to leave the line height at 1.7. That just looks a little bit more presentable. And I like the letter spacing at three for buttons, a little bit spacing between the letters just gives it a better appearance. Next up is the colors. So let's make this button white by clicking on this swatch. And then for the text, we need to make the text black. Go up here, PG is for background text and we make the text black and then we go to the hover state because currently if you hover over it with your cursor it will turn blue and of course we don't want that and the hover state you look at this little tag flap that is here on the left click on that and then for the hover state i am also going to make it white so i click here on white but I'm going to reduce the opacity and it's already reduced up here. You can see this little slider is here. It's at 82%, so you don't have to mess around with that. So if you hover over it now, it will go slightly gray because it's opaque and it's on a black background. I want to remove the icon and that again is found here under the button settings icon and you click up here for remove it. 
and we are done. So now you have your contact bar, but for this kind of layout, I think the spacing on my block is a little too much at the top and the bottom. I click with in the blue area and I just drag up and I do the same for the bottom and it will still leave 15 pixels there. You cannot go all the way to zero. If you click on the block settings, settings, more settings, you will see it still has 15 pixels both at the top and the bottom. And I think that is just groovy and good enough. Let's save our work by updating. View it on the front end. And looking spiffy. Let's add some animation for both the text and the button. So let's close out here, go to our text, and I'm going to just click on the column, settings, more settings, and we go under advanced for animation, and let's slide down or scroll down to until we see slide in left. Is it slide in left? I'm never sure. Yes, slide in left. And then for the button, let's click on that, settings, more settings, advanced, Entrance animation, scroll down to slide in right, slide in right. I'm going to increase the delay to around 1.2 and duration a little bit slower, 1.5. Save our work, view it again on the front end to see how that animation will display. Click on the preview, Scroll down and witness the power of animation. Of course, be careful with animation. You don't want to make it look like a circus. Close out. Last step is to look at responsiveness. Go down to mobile view and click on tablet. There's a little bit of squashing going over here because the columns are both set at 50%. So what I'll do is I'll increase this column width by grabbing the handle and dragging it until the text fits in. Strangely, this column remains at 50%. So because I increase this one now to 61%, it pushes this one to the next break. All I need to do is grab the handle here on the right of the button column and drag it in. And then it will bounce back here once you have enough space over there. Our tablet view is okay, I think. Let's go have a look at our mobile view. Scroll down and then over here, our button, this looks a little bit misaligned. So what I will do, first I will decrease the font size. So I click within the font element on topography, and then for the size, I'm just going to click down, and it just took me one pixel. Then click on the button, choose alignment, click once, and it goes to the left. A little bit too much space between these two elements. So let's reduce that by going to the column settings, column, settings, it's set at 10, so if we reduce it to zero, and uh, let me just get it to zero, zero, still too much space. We could go to this column now and take away 10 at the bottom, but I'm here anyway in this setting. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on with the margins go into the negative until I think it looks the way I want it to look. And that is where the non-precise science of design often comes in, where you just look at it with your eye and you say, it looks good enough to me, I accept it. And our contact bar is done for our abstract photography page. Let's save that, update it, and then we're done. Again, just to mention to you that, of course, a button is a link. It needs to go somewhere. And just to give you an idea of what we will cover in level two, if you click on the button, and we go back to our desktop view for that, if you click on the button, you'll see that link icon over there. And this is where you will enter all the stuff that you will need, so that when people click on this button, it will either take you to another place on this page, or it can open a pop-up, or it can take you to another page. And that will all be covered in the future levels here at Brizzy for Beginners.